Today, I'm gonna to build a Wordle clone using HTML, CSS, and plain old vanilla JavaScript. If you haven't heard of Wordle yet, I honestly don't know how you've managed to avoid it. But it's basically an addictive guessing game. Every day, the whole world has to guess the same five letter word in six tries. If you guess the right letter, but in the wrong spot, it turns yellow. The right letter in the right spot, it turns green. I did borrow some CSS ideas from inspecting the elements tab on the official Wordle page but most of this I've worked out for myself. We'll also use an API to pull in a new word to guess and also to check that the guess word is a real word. But this brings with it some unexpected challenges, so make sure to follow along to find out what that is. Okay, let's get started. So I have a Wordle up here, so this is what we're looking to do. We've got uh, six rows of five squares. We have our header up the top and we have a keyboard down the bottom. So this is what we wanna try and recreate. So let's first create our directory. Call that Wordle clone. And I'm gonna to touch index.html, create that file, and I can make two more directories. CSS and JavaScript. And then we'll touch CSS styles.css and js main.js. And there we have our directory. So let's open this in VS Code. Okay, so we've got our index. So if we'll do uh, exclamation point to let Emmett uh, build our HTML, pop that size up a bit, it should be readable. And we'll call this Wordle clone. Let's just say Wordle here. And let's open this in the browser. And now we have the start of our clone. So, so I'm just going to get the head set up here and I know I'm going to need my script uh, equals um, and I'm also going to need my um, CSS. I'm going to delete this for now. And I'm going to create a div with an ID of container. So I can use Emmet here, so I can div. And I can do um, hash key and type in container. And that creates my div with an ID of container. And I'm also going to have a div with an ID of game. And inside of that, I want a header. Inside my header, I want a h1 with a class of title. And let's have a look at our CSS and start adding some CSS. So I'm just going to remove all margin and padding that comes in the browser and because I don't want that messing anything up. And I'm going to add some styles to the HTML and to the body. I'm going to say height 100%. And let's everything font family of see the sans save that and so what did i create i created an id of container so let's uh, look at that first container and i'm gonna make this a flex display give it a background color of a black uh, I, so we can see already that this should be working so we have some black coming in there um, I'm going to give it a height of 100% and we now have it covering the whole page. So yeah, we don't need a width on that. Quickly, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to give it a like and hit the subscribe button. It really helps a small channel like mine get seen by others on YouTube. So you'd be doing me a massive favor. All right, back to the video. Let's look at our title. So up here is our title and we have a little border down here. So Let's put a border on the header component. We'll do border bottom 1px solid. And I copied this color from the Wordle page title. I'm going to give it a nice super light gray color of Gainsborough. We'll give it a font size of 2.5 rem. If you're not sure how rem works and how it differs from pixels and uh, EMs, uh, I've made a video on that a while ago, so I'm gonna to link to that in the description for you. Um, so you can watch that after this. Give it a font weight of bold. And 
put some margins around it. And we'll align it in center text. Now let's add this font family. So we're overriding what uh, the browser is giving it as a default. There we go. And now we need to do some work on this. So our container needs to align items, center, flex direction, uh, column. Okay, cool. Wordle. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at is this uh, board. Now I'm not going to um, create HTML elements for each of these uh, squares. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use JavaScript to uh, paint the board onto the DOM. So let's take a look at that next. So underneath the header, I can create a div with an ID of board container. Oh, that's all capitals, let's try that again. Board con uh, container. And inside that, I've got a div with an ID of board. Now let's take a look at our JavaScript for the first time. So we wanna make sure that the file is loaded and ready. So we're gonna add an event listener to make sure that DOM content is loaded. And let's pass this in as a callback. And then we're gonna create a function called create squares. Inside of it, we're gonna get the game board. We're gonna get element by ID, which is board, which we just created. And then we're gonna run a for loop. So let's let Emmett do that for us. I know I want uh, 30 squares because we've got six by five. So I'm gonna do this, start at zero and let it run on, as long as index is less than 30. And we'll do let square equals document.create element. I'm gonna create a div, class list dot add square. I'm gonna give it an ID and I'm gonna give it an ID of the number of the square. So we'll use the index, which is index plus one. And then we need to game board, append child, square. And now we just need to execute that when this loads. So we may not see anything happen just yet because we haven't styled it, um, but let's inspect our element. And inside the board container, we have our board, and there we have our squares. So let's add some CSS so that they start showing up. So let's start with the uh, board, board container. Next thing I wanna do is style the board. And we're gonna use some uh, CSS grid here. All right, let's start styling the squares. So we have square and we're gonna give it a border so we can see it, 2px solid. And we'll use that same color we had from before, 58, 58, 60. Let's see if we can see anything. And oh, there, if you look closely, you'll see tiny little squares. So let's keep styling that. And we'll give them a minimum width of 60 pixels, minimum height of 60 pixels. And oh, now we have our box. So we're starting to look a bit like this. And I know some letters are gonna go in here. So I'm gonna make sure the font size is big enough. And so we're gonna use two rems, font weight of bold. So we're looking pretty good here. The next thing we wanna do is the keyboard. So let's take a look at that. So underneath the board container, I'm gonna make a div with an ID of keyboard container. And inside, I need a keyboard that looks like this. So I've got three rows. So I'm gonna make keyboard row. And I'm going to make these keys uh, buttons. So let's give it a, let's make button. And we're gonna use a data attribute called key to um, 
help us figure out what buttons we're pressing. Probably going to do some copying and pasting just to save time. So I've got three keyboard rows here. So I've got uh, the old QWERTY UI up, which is the top level. And then you have your ASTF, GH, JKL down here. But around it, we've got some uh, spacers. So this is some, some of the CSS that I borrowed from uh, the actual Wordle page. Um, and, and then down here, we've got our uh, enter and delete buttons, which are wide buttons. So these are slightly bigger uh, than these particular buttons here. Um, so I've got a data key enter because I need to know when we press enter and submit the word and I've got a data key of delete So I need to know when you want to delete a letter that you've entered So I'm going to save that and now we'll have a look at some CSS for this So we'll start with the keyboard container I'm going to give that a height of 200 pixels and now we need to style the keyboard rows Let's move this up a bit we can use this property called touch action, which if you look here, uh, it tells you, uh, determines whether the touch input may trigger default behavior supplied by a user agent. Um, so touch action, we're going to give it here is uh, manipulation. And now let's style the buttons that are in there. So keyboard row, and then we'll do the button. Move that up a bit. So we don't want a default um, styling on the button, so we'll inherit and we'll make sure that it's uh, bold. We don't want any border or padding. All this stuff comes with uh, buttons in the browser. Let's give it a fixed height of 58 pixels and cursor pointer so it and we'll go with the background color. And for this one, I've again copied this um, value from the actual Wordle page. So it looks the same. I'm gonna make the font a specific color as well. And there you can see we've got the start of what looks like a, um, a keyboard. You can see our letters at least. Um, so let's keep going and make sure that looks like an actual keyboard. And let's see how we're looking. Cool. So we're making some progress. Buttons are looking a bit square. So let's add a border radius of four pixels. We also want to add a user select attribute. So it controls the appearance of selection. And we can do uh, user select and uh, none because we don't want the user to select it. We just want them to, to press it. So I haven't styled the wide button yet. And I also haven't styled the spacer. So hopefully when we do those, we'll start to look a bit better here. Button dot wide button. And we're just gonna give that a flex grow of 1.5. Uh, you can see here, this is flex grow of one. So this button is one and a half times larger and we wanna make the spacer half the size. So we'll do spacer half, flex grow and you can do 0 0.5. And ta-da, you have a keyboard and it's a bit squashed. So let's try and figure out what is happening there. So I have a, I have a game container here, which I haven't styled. So let's do that uh, up here. So we've got game of an ID. I'm gonna make that 100%. So let's give it a max width of 500 pixels and we'll go display uh, flex and the flex direction column. Uh, well, that looks much better. Cool. So uh, if we have a look at this. It looks almost the same. Uh, so visually now we're looking pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to start um, figuring out what to do when we click on the actual keys. So let's go back into our JavaScript file. And down the bottom here, what we want to do is we want to iterate over each key and add an on-click handler. So let's get the keys. So these are the keyboard keys and we'll get a document query selector all. And we're looking for keyboard row buttons. 
And then we can do a for loop and let's change array to keys to like this. And I personally find it easier to just use I. And so for each key, so keys index, I'm going to assign on click equals. And I want to get the uh, data key uh, from the target itself. So that is getting our uh, actual letter. Let's just console log key. Oh, and that's because I forgot to add the full stop to my class selector. And ah, there we go. So you can see here we're uh, logging out the actual keys that we've pressed. And that is del for delete, and this is enter. So now I need to figure out what to do with those. So I'm going to create a function called update guest words, which takes the letter. Uh, up here, I'm going to create a variable called guest words. And it's going to be an array with an array inside of it. So if we look at how Wordle works, we've got uh, six, potentially six words. So we want to keep a record of all the words that we've created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array that contains all the words. And each word will be an array that contains each letter. So we're just going to update that inner array. And when we start guessing another word, we're going to add another array to capture that. So the other thing I need to think of is how do I know which array to update? Um, so thankfully, I'm not going to sit here and try and figure it out with you. Um, I've already uh, put this together myself to make sure I know how to do it. Um, so I have this function that I've called get current word array. And what that'll do is it'll tell me the number of guest words so far. So obviously we have zero at the moment. And we'll say equal guest words dot length. So that checks the length of this array. And then I'm going to return guest words, number of guest words, minus one. So that'll return the actual array that we're updating. So I'm going to say const current word array equals get current word array. So I'll check if current word array exists and current word array dot length is less than five, uh, which we're checking to make sure that we haven't filled in five letters for that word array yet, then we want to do this. We want to do current word array dot push letter. And that goes into our on click, which is up here. Update guess words, letter. Uh, sorry, not letter. We call this key, so let's call this letter. Okay, so what do we do with those? So we need to find out which is the next available space here. How do we know this, this is available? How do we know this is available once that's filled in? So we'll go back into our clone. And I've got a const I've set up here called available space. And we're going to assign that a number, and that's always going to be uh, number one when we initialize the game. So in here, we get the element that matches that ID. So we'll say uh, document dot get element by ID, and I'm going to convert the number one to a string. And if you remember, when we created our um, Boxes, we gave them an index. We gave them an ID of the index plus one. So it starts at one. And here we're going to get that box that has an ID of one. And so once we've done that, so we're going to take available space equals available space plus one. Um, so let's just set it up for the next, next go around. And what we can do is we can say text content of available space equals the letter that we have passed in. Sorry, available space element. So let's see if we've made any progress here. If I type in Q and does anything happen? I have, so, oh yeah, I don't need these as const. This needs to be a let. I'll make this a let just as well. 
And this does have a Q in it. You can see it here in the elements, but let's just find out why we cannot see it. So let's go into our CSS and we have, um, we're looking for square. So we need to add a color and we'll give that the old Gainsborough again. And we want a text transform to uppercase. Like this again, and oh, we have our cube. So it's a bit misaligned, and I think I'll make that font size a bit bigger. That fit 50 pixels. Okay, that fits better. And let's just give this some flex properties. And we have our cube. And does this work? So this currently replaces the next one. So that's the next thing we need to figure out. And that was pretty silly. I've just passed in one for some reason. So if I change that to available space, refresh, and we're now getting some letters. So the next thing we need to do is figure out what to uh, do when we press enter. So I'm gonna move this down to the bottom. So our functions are all above it. So let's say if key equals enter, we've changed that to letter. So we'll do if letter equals enter, then we need to uh, add a handle submit word function, and then we need to stop there. So we don't run any other code. So let's go up here, function handle submit word. And before we do that, we need a word to uh, check it with. So let's go let word equals, let's call this dairy. So that's got five letters. So we'll get the current word array again. And let's check. If it's not equal to five, in length, and I should probably spell that correctly. Then I'm gonna window alert, word must be five letters. Let's see what happens there. And word must be five letters. If I finish it, I probably won't get anything. So that's good. And let's turn it into an actual string, so Use the um, join method on the array itself. So if current word equals word, so we can window.alert. And give them a congratulations message message. So we can type in uh, dairy here because we know that's the word, press enter and we get a congratulations message. At this point they've submitted a five letter word because we checked it here. Uh, so we want to um, add another array so they can start guessing the next word. So we'll just do that here. We'll do guesswords.push, we'll push a new array in. Hello, nope, that doesn't work. So then we go um, Next line, very, that doesn't work. And I'm just gonna quickly see what happens when we get to the end. Now at this point, we should probably tell them that they've lost, right? So let's do that. So guest words dot length equals six. At this point, we've checked if they've won, which they haven't. So clearly they've lost. If the length of the guess words is already six, then we can say window.alert. Sorry, you have no more guesses. And we can tell them what the word is. Word is word, and this needs to be back ticks. So let's try and recreate that real quick. There we go. 
If you have no more guesses, the word is dairy. Great. Okay, so let's have a look at Wordle here. And if I say uh, dairy here, and now you can see I get a green tile uh, if they're in the correct position and a gray tile if they're not. So let's start figuring out that styling. And we also got a cool animation that the tile flips over. So to get that animation going, I'm gonna use a library called Animate uh, CSS. And uh, you can see what I'm gonna use here is this uh, flip in X. So I want this sort of animation here. Um, so documentation, and I'm going to copy this link and paste that into my CSS. Oh, excuse me, paste that into the head of my HTML. And to make animate CSS work, uh, everything that we want to animate uh, needs an animate class name. So here where we're actually creating the squares, and I'm gonna also add this animate double underscore animated uh, class name to each square. And you can also, and you'll also have seen that uh, each square flipped one after the next. They didn't all flip at the same time. So we're gonna use um, some hacky code to try and replicate that um, using some set timeouts. So in the handle submit word, so just here, I'm gonna set my interval of 200 milliseconds. And then I'm gonna say current word array dot for each and for each letter I'm going to also use the index I'm going to use set timeout and down here I can put my time uh, interval and I got to figure out what color I'm going to I'm going to make each tile so uh, so to start with I'm just going to give it a fixed color and then we can work on adding that color function afterwards so I've got my tile color and there's something I need to try and figure out which tile I need to change uh, colors so I'm going to add another uh, variable up here called guest word count and that starts at zero and for to help me figure out the ID of the first letter in the word that's being typed, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of maths. So I'm going to say first letter ID equals guest word count times five, because there's five letters in each word. And then I add one to get the first letter ID. You'll remember each uh, individual square has an ID going from one to 30. So let's say guess word count is one. I've already guessed one word. This is going to do one times five plus one, which is six. And six is the first letter of the next, um, the next word. So I will say const letter ID equals first letter ID plus index. So this allows me to get the letter ID for each specific letter in the word. And obviously the first index is zero. So that'll still give me the first letter ID if it's the first letter. I uh, hope that makes sense. And let's get the element. And we're going to add, and we're going to add a class, uh, which is, type it out, animate, flip in X. And what I also want to do is add some CSS. So we can do uh, letter.style equals background. Oh, this needs to be back ticks as well. So back and color. Tile color. And I also want the border color to be the tile color. So it looks the same. So if I do um, fairy, which I know is similar, but not the same, I press enter. And of course, nothing happens. And also I need to update this somewhere. So I'm gonna update this down here. And this is, shouldn't be letter style, it should be letter L style. 
Let's see if this does anything. So I'm gonna guess the wrong word, hit enter. Now it has changed the colors, but we didn't get our animations. Do we have a class name, but this is, the, this is what you get when you don't copy and paste properly. Uh, you type things in incorrectly. So let's try that again. And we did get the animation, but it didn't uh, wait for us. And um, the reason is that I've used the same interval, but I need to extend the interval each time for each letter. So I need to multiply that by index. So the first um, letter in the array will go after 200 milliseconds. The second one oh, will actually go after, go immediately because 200 times zero is obviously zero. Then the next one is 200 milliseconds. And the one after that is 400 milliseconds and so on. So let's see if that works. Um, and we'll try something a bit hairy here. Hit enter, and there you go. We've got a nice animation. Um, so the next thing we need to do is make these colors go green or yellow, uh, depending on whether they are correct or not. So this will go to get tile color function. And in that we're passing letter and index. And up here I can create a function called get tile color letter index. So the first thing to check is if the letter is correct. Um, doesn't matter if it's in the same space, if it's not the right letter. So is correct letter equals We'll see if the word includes the letter. And they are both lowercase, so I don't think we need to worry about uppercasing anything. Let's see if it isn't the correct letter. Let's return that gray color. This. Uh, so we need we know it's the correct letter. Now we need to know if it's in the right space. So now let's find the letter in that position. Maybe there's a better name for this, but what we're doing is we're getting the character in this word at the index that we've passed in. And that's correct position is if the letter equals the letter in that position. So if it's the correct position, is correct position. Let's return the green color that I've stolen from Wordle. Uh, otherwise, I can just return this sort of uh, orangey color. So I've got tile color now. I'm using from get tile color. So let's put a different word in and see what happens. And now we have our greens, uh, but that's not correct uh, because. These are the correct letters, but they're in the wrong place, so they should be uh, they should be yellow. Oh yeah, what I've done here is I've reassigned letter, so I need to use triple equals and try that again. Fired is what I would be if I was doing this professionally. And there we go. We have our orange letters, and now if I do fairy, we should get some more greens. And finally, if I do dairy, we should get our congratulations and all greens. Now, so we have a working Wordle. The challenge here, of course, is to uh, make sure that um, we're not just using the same word and we don't have to hard code a word. So what I have already done, and I'm not gonna uh, go through step by step here, but I signed up for the words API. Um, so what the words API does is it allows me to request words of a certain length and I can get their definitions and all that sort of thing. Um, but it'll give me back a random word of five letters. So uh, I've signed up, um, it's free to use and you sign up at rapid API, you get two and a half thousand requests a day. You do have to give your credit card details. Um, so just be aware of that. Just make sure obviously you don't expose the key that you get from this or commit it to, uh, your repository in case anyone abuses it because it is free up to two and a half thousand requests a day. But then uh, if you use over that, then you will start to get charged. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is skip ahead a little bit, close this, and I'm gonna close this. 
and I'm going to copy and paste some code that I have done before. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to we want to uh, get a new word. So I'm going to paste this in here. What you can see here is the format of this fetch request uh, comes straight from the documentation. So once you sign up, get your key, uh, it gives you uh, basically this code to copy and paste in. Um, I've constructed the query, getting your words API, and I'm asking for a random word. And I'm saying um, minimum five letters and maximum of five letters. So basically give me a five letter word. And here I'm trying to make it a bit easier by just saying, give me a verb, but this isn't necessary. So I might just delete this part of speech thing. Uh, so get new word will get called at the same time as create square. So when we've initialized the game, we're going to get a new word. And right here, we don't need a word. So we're just initializing the word variable. So we can assign it to it. So get new word calls the API. What it does here is it takes the response, converts it to JSON, and then we get the, the result and we assign it to the word variable. And the other thing we want to do is um, that you'll have noticed if you play Wordle is if you try and put in a fake word just to get some letters, like throw an A I O U so you know which vowels to use, it's going to say that's, that's not a word, it's not a recognized word. And so we'll do the same thing here as well. So we want to, um, in our handle submit word, uh, we're basically going to make sure that the word exists. What I'm going to do is once I've got the current word, um, after that, I'm going to uh, get a fetch request here. And what I can do is I can just pass the current word into the API request to get request to words API. And if it is not a, an existing word, it will uh, return an error. So here I can do a dot then, and I can take the results. And I'll say if the res is not okay, throw an error. We'll catch that a little bit later. Uh, but if it is okay, what we want to do is carry on. So everything that we've done here can go inside of this then. Um, but after the then, let's do a little catch. So we want to catch any error, including the one that we've thrown. And we'll say window alert word is not recognized. And we'll save that. So now we've got our submit word. We are getting the word um, array using current word array. I'm going to check that it's uh, five letters in length. And we're going to then create a string out of it. We're going to pass that into the API. If that word exists, we will continue and we'll do all the figuring out of the colors and all that sort of thing. Uh, so let's go back here and let's check our network tab. And there is a pre-flight request and our actual request to run a word. And here we have a word, Gable. So let's play with that in mind. So I'm going to first start by, um, so that is not recognized. And I'm kind of stuck here now because the last thing we need to implement is our delete key. Um, because that didn't go through, I can't type any other letters. I can't overwrite it. So let's implement the delete key and we should be pretty much done. If letter is enter, so down here I can do if letter equals DEL for delete, can I handle delete letter? And then return there as well, so we don't carry on. So up here I can do a function, handle de delete letter, and that goes there. So one more time, we're gonna get our current word array, get current word array, and we'll get the removed letter which using pop here allows us to do two things. Pop. So pop will remove, uh, will mutate the existing array. So it's gonna remove the last letter from the array, but we can also assign it to a variable. So we're gonna assign it to removed letter here. And that is incorrect. So I'm just gonna fix that. That's why pop didn't work the first time. Let's say guest words 
and guess words dot length minus one. So we're getting the last guest word doing this. Uh, equals the current word array. So remember I said that it mutates the current word array. We're now reassigning it without that letter to the uh, to the current word array. And so that's step one but we also need to update the square in the board to remove the text content. So let's get the last letter element by document dot get element by ID. And we're gonna use our handy available space um, variable, which we used before. So we'll do string available space uh, minus one. So that gets the last letter and not the next letter. And then we'll say last letter element dot text content equals an empty string. And then we'll fix up available space. So we'll say available space is that same. Uh, available space minus one. So let's see if that works. And there you go, we can now delete. So if we put in a fake word, enter, word was not recognized, can we delete? We sure can. So here's the thing I said at the beginning uh, that might cause us uh, some issues. Have you seen this word, yodel? Are you likely to guess that word? Probably not. So using this API um, has made me realize the kind of genius of Wordle itself is that we're always playing a word that people have heard of. Um, so clearly there is maybe because he's only doing one word a day, he is able to create a massive array of words that people have heard of that he can verify that are simple enough words. Um, but we can play with um, this word anyway, we can test hello. And you can see that we have E in Yodel, L in Yodel, and O in Yodel. So if I do Yodel now, uh, I won. And Yodel turns green. Let's see what other word it comes up with this time. So if I reload, you can play again. And <laughs> here's a word, uh, Vili, that Unless it's one half of Milli Vanilli from the 80s and 90s, then uh, I don't know what Vili is. So that's the problem. Uh, you can build this yourself using the API. Uh, it's a good practice to, uh, to play with an API, but I would probably suggest maybe doing a, an array of, of words and just cycling over those and using local storage to, to try and store what word uh, people are actually playing so you can give people a few chances to play. But yeah, so that's our, our Wordle clone. Unfortunately, some people have tried to cash in on the Wordle craze by submitting Wordle clones to the App Store, which is a pretty slimy thing to do. So I definitely wouldn't encourage that, but I hope you've been able to follow along with this tutorial and see what we can really do with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let me know in the comments below if there are other games like this that you'd like to see me try to recreate, and maybe I can consider doing one for a future video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.